All right, Reveille M YouTube subscribers, this is Salim Rezai, and today we're going to be talking about Bundle Branch Blocks 101. This was a really popular blog post that I wrote on the Reveille M website, and I put out some little short videos on Bundle Branch Blocks, but I thought it was worth making a longer video going through this. So before we get started, I think it's important to understand the typical conduction, the conduction system of the heart, and where the leads sit in relation to this conduction system. So here we have a heart with the conduction system overlaid upon it. And conduction typically starts down the sinoatrial node to the atrioventricular node, and then down the right and left bundles. And then the left bundle also has a posterior and anterior fascicle, and then ultimately back up the Purkinje fibers. Now, in terms of where the leads sit in regards to this, we can see that V1 and V2 are our septal leads. V3 and V4 are anterior leads, V5 and V6 are our lateral leads, 1 and AVL are our high lateral leads, and then 2, 3 and AVF are our inferior leads. Now an important concept to understand before we go any further is understanding why you get an R wave versus an S wave on an EKG. And a simple way to put this is that R waves are depolarization toward a lead which I like to remember as running towards. An S wave is depolarization going away from the leads, which I like to think of as stepping away. So running towards, stepping away, just to simplify and remember what kind of wave you get depending on which way it's moving toward a lead. So let's talk about normal conduction and then we will get into bundle branch blocks. So here we are again with our heart, the conduction system, and the leads as it would somewhat sit in regards to a person. And what we can see is as we get our initial depolarization down from the septal leads toward the anterior leads, what you see is a predominant S wave stepping away because depolarization is going away from V1 and V2. It is also going away from lead AVL, which is our high lateral lead. And then AVR, which is a commonly forgotten lead, which sits up in the top right corner of the chest for patients, depolarization is going away from this as well. So all four of these leads will have a predominant S wave. Now, as depolarization starts working its way through the anterior portion of the heart and toward the apex, what we can see is we get a predominant R wave running towards depolarization, moving towards the inferior and lateral portions of the heart. And we can see that we have big R waves in 3, AVF, and 2, as well as V6 and 1. So now that is the typical conduction system. So now let's talk about bundle branch blocks. And the first question you need to ask yourself is, is the QRS wide? And I've depicted that with the red arrows here in V1 and V6 on both sides. So in left bundle branch block, as the name states, the left bundle is blocked. In right bundle branch block, the right bundle is blocked. But you don't have to figure that out at this point. The first question is, is my QRS wide? Well, by definition, if there is a block, that means that there is going to be a delay in depolarization, which is why you get a wide QRS. And the way this is defined is greater than three little boxes or greater than 0.12 seconds. Remember, each little box is 0.04 seconds on an EKG running at 25 millimeters per second. So now it's wide. So now the next thing you do is you look at lead V1. And what you get with a left bundle branch block is a big S wave depolarization going away from V1. Whereas with a right bundle branch block, you get a little bit of an S, but predominantly you get a big R. So a big R wave means right bundle branch block. So you get this RSR prime, which people call bunny ears, rabbit ears, but it has this particular morphology to it. Whereas with a left bundle branch block, you're gonna get predominant forces of depolarization going away from lead V1. And we're gonna go through that right now. So here's our heart conduction system. And this time I got rid of a lot of leads and I just kept V1, which is septal and V6, which is lateral. And the blue arrows is kind of the direction of conduction. And the problem with the left bundle branch block, again, as the name says, is a left bundle is blocked. 
So that means depolarization is going to start on the right side of the heart, work its way down, and start to move to the left through the septum and the apex of the heart. So knowing that, if depolarization is moving away from V1, that is why you get a big S wave and lead V1, stepping away, depolarization away from V1. But as that depolarization starts moving down and over to the left, that means the terminal force of the depolarization is moving toward V6, which is why we get a big R wave in V6. So that is the typical morphology that you'll see in the precordial leads and left bundle branch block. As a matter of fact, here are the precordial leads of somebody who has a left bundle branch block. And again, what you can see is you have a small R wave with a big S wave in lead V1. Remember, depolarization moving away from lead V1 in a left bundle and moving toward V6, which is why you get a big R wave. So stepping away, running towards. Now let's talk about right bundle branch block, which is basically a block in the right bundle, which means depolarization starts to occur in the left ventricle first, moving down the left side of the heart and coming across the septum and the apex of the heart back toward the right side. So what we typically see with this is in lead V1, as the initial depolarization is moving away from V1, we get this kind of broad S wave. But as it starts to move back across to the right side and back up, we get a predominant R wave, which is why we get this typical RSR prime kind of pattern. Now with V6, what we end up getting is depolarization predominantly moving toward V6, which is why we get a big R wave. But then ultimately, as that depolarization starts to move across to the right, it starts moving away from V6, which is why we get this kind of broad slurred S at the end of V6. So here we have a typical EKG precordial leads of somebody with a right bundle branch block. And again, what you can see is this RSR prime. Remember, S is stepping away, depolarization initially going away from lead V1, but as it comes back across to the right and back up, we get a predominant R wave, the rabbit ears or the RSR prime pattern that we typically see in V1. In V6, what we end up getting is we get a big R wave as depolarization moves toward V6, and then we get that slurred S wave as depolarization starts to move across the right side back up toward the right ventricle. Now, left bundle branch blocks can get even more complicated. Left anterior fascicular block and left posterior fascicular block. So here's our heart, here's the conduction system, and as a reminder, here's our left posterior fascicle and our left anterior fascicle on that heart. So now, let's zoom in on this and let's start with left posterior fascicular block. So the problem here, as denoted by the blue X, is the left posterior fascicle is blocked. And if this is where our leads typically sit on a patient, then what we'll get is depolarization that moves away from the septal leads, V1 and V2, comes down the left and right bundles, but because the posterior fascicle is blocked, that conduction will continue down toward the inferior leads and away from the high lateral leads. And so what we end up getting is a big S wave in the high lateral leads stepping away as depolarization moves away because that posterior fascicle is blocked. And then we end up getting a bigger R wave in the inferior leads as the depolarization starts moving toward those inferior leads. The other thing of note with a left posterior fascicular block is you can also get a right axis deviation. And we can tell that because in lead AVF, the terminal force of our QRS is up going, which means depolarization is moving toward the feet of the patient. And the terminal force of the QRS is down going in one and two, which means the heart is shifted to the right. So right axis deviation. Now with the left anterior fascicular block, the problem is the anterior fascicle is blocked. So now if this is where our leads typically sit, what we see is depolarization as it comes down predominantly will go back up with the low left posterior fascicle. So that means that predominant depolarization is toward the high lateral leads and away from the inferior leads. And so what we end up getting is a big R wave in leads one and AVL, which is high lateral as that depolarization travels up the left posterior fascicle. 
and away from the inferior leads, which is why we get a predominant S wave. The other thing you can get with a left anterior fascicular block is left axis deviation, which is depicted by an upward going QRS in lead one and a downward going QRS in lead AVF, which means the heart is shifted to the left. So there you go, the bottom line. I like doing this with bundle branch blocks and lots of things when it comes to EKG. And that is that the paper itself is really confusing. So I like to put a heart with a conduction system on it, map out where my blocks are at and where conduction would move through on that heart. And then the next thing to remember is that an S wave is depolarization away, stepping away, and an R wave is depolarization toward running towards. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed Bundle Branch Blocks 101. Obviously, it's much more complicated than this, but this should give you a good base foundation on how to identify Bundle Branch Blocks. I hope you guys found this useful. Thank you for tuning in, and until next time.